Well, hello YouTube, Apple iDev here. Um, I'm sorry it's been so long that I've gotten a demo out or anything. Uh, my life's been crazy. I've had a lot of stuff going on. Um, I do actually have a few demos lined up. I'm just going to be posting them incrementally so you don't get overwhelmed with new videos. Um, anyway, so at Apple's WWDC this year, the Worldwide Developer Conference, uh, first and second week of June, um, they announced something very cool, which was that we're updating to a new version of Objective C, which is available in Xcode 4.4, which is the public, the current public version, as well as Xcode 4.5, which is the current developer preview version. Um, and this modern Objective C brings so many new features; it's unbelievable. Um, and well, a lot of them will be used by everyone. We're going to go over just a few of them today. Um, so the first thing is, if you know anything about really any programming language, is that, or any programming language rather, that uses method declarations, where you have to declare a method above all of your other method bodies, and then down below you can implement it. Um, and any language that does that, if, you're, if you use a method that w has not been implemented yet, the language is going to throw a fit. You're going to have to uh, move that implementation above that method. So you'd have to declare and implement all of your methods before you did your main method. Um, what Apple announced was that with this new, um, with this new version of Objective C, you no longer have to do that. Um, if I want to create a method here that returns void called do something and it takes an input of, I don't know, an ns integer named Steve, and um, call this something else, which is an input of a, I'll call it, I'll make it an ns string, and we'll call this John. Alright, and it used to be that if you did this, and over here you called, over here you called self do something with an ns integer and something else, here we'll just make one up here. And we'll say ns string my string. All right. So if we were to use my int and my string as inputs, um, in the old versions of Objective C, if we were to say uh, uh, call that method. Um, uh, up there, but we were to implement it down here. In old versions, you'd get acceptance thrown, the compiler would complain, it wouldn't let you compile. Um, it would say that up here, you are calling a method uh, without um, implementing it. Here, let me uh, change one thing here. Alrighty. Anyway, it would say that you are, the, just so it's easier to see, it would say that you are uh, using the method here, do something something else, um, but you haven't declared it yet. Well, with this new version of Objective-C, like you can see, I have no issues with my code. What it does is it pre-compiles. Um, and essentially what the compiler does is it, before looking at any method bodies anywhere, what it does is it goes through your code and finds every method. And it will look at all of the method headers, so it already has a dictionary. So effectively, if you don't want to... Um, and the, the bigger part where this comes in is not as much with the method ordering, but let's say you want to do a private method. Um, before, there was either a there was either no way to do it or a kind of tedious way, which was that you'd have to create a separate interface called an interface extension, and you'd have to say um, you'd have to create an extension for app delegate, and you would have had to say void my private method. Um, 
And now what it allows you to do, what this new precompiler does, is it takes that out. You can implement a method down here. Um, you can say void my private method. And the compiler is not going to complain. See, if I build it, it's okay with that. Because what it does is it goes through all of the method headers and it essentially says, okay, here are the methods. So if it's a private method, this will never show up in an API. It'll never show up in a header file or uh, I guess in an interface. But so in all essence, you've declared a private method without having to write any uh, declaration code, which is fantastic. It's something that people are really excited about. Um, the next thing that we're going to get excited about is at properties. Um, it used to be in Objective-C that when you created a property, um, it used to be that when you created a property, why did it do that? Hmm. And this is why this is the developer preview and not a release version. All right, so um, it used to be that if you declared an at property, let's say we did at property strong non-atomic, and we'll just say let's just say at property and a string. Now we'll say strong non-atomic um, if we create a property for that string we make it a strong non-atomic property it used to be in Objective-C that you would get a complaint uh, that you would get a warning right here that would say warning incomplete implementation and what the way you would have to fix that is you would have to say synthesize my string and in order to create an instance variable for it, so you're not actually accessing the direct property so that you're using a setter and a getter, uh, you'd have to say underscore my string. Um, and that creates an instance variable for it. Well, uh, with the new Objective-C, not only does it automatically synthesize, you just don't even have to do that anymore. The other thing that it adds is that now it automatically creates that. If you want to set the value, you can just say underscore my string equals at high, don't even have to create an instance variable. And this is something everyone is happy about. It's going to make coding so much easier. It's going to make your code more concise and more readable, and it's going to be fantastic. It takes rid of all of that, that synthesized bullshit, and it's great. Um, okay, next thing is literals. Um, again, it used to be that... I'm just going to create a simple method where I can mess around. Um... Actually, I don't even have to because of the new compiler. Um, um, it used to be that when you created an object, like an NS number, um, you'd obviously uh, create the number, and what you would do, because it's an object, what you would do is you would say, my number, you'd have to say, NS number, Right, and as number, number with int 36, 26, whatever. I can't type either. Um, however, uh, and the same thing if you were then trying to assign something, you would have to say my number equals ns. Eh. Are you going to have to do it? Actually, I don't remember this part. Um, but anyway, so normally you would have to do that. The new way to assign the new, essentially, what we now have is you can you have a string literal. You can say at high, and that's a literal because you don't have to do this string whatever whatever bullshit. Um, and that is very cool. But it. And this number hasn't been there yet. It's, you know, you've always had to do that. Well, with new Objective-C, you can type my number equals, and instead of having to do NS number whatever, what you can now do is you now have primitive NS numbers. You could say at 123, and that's all you need. That is a primitive NS number. It's that simple. At lets it know that it's an object, and that's all you have to do. Um, it's fantastic. 
And similarly, if you want to, normally when you would have to do arithmetic with objects, if you had two NS number objects, um, before you would have to uh, type out a long string of method calls, now you can just do NS, or now you can just do my number equals, if you have an at parentheses, that's what signifies this. You can say at parentheses, my number divided by 16, and that's it. It's going to let me do that? I know. All right, but you get the point. Essentially, that's how you can do arithmetic now. Um, and I'll try and find an example of where you would do that. I'll post it in another video. Um, the next thing is arrays. Um, it used to be that when you declared an array, that you would declare an array um, like this. You'd declare the array like this, and you'd say array. Um, and you would instantiate it like this. You would say array equals ns array, array with objects, and you would list, you know, and if you're doing strings, you can, you would say, you know, object one, object two, object three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you hit the end and a semicolon to terminate. Um, the problem was, a few problems. First of all, it's nil terminated. Um, and the problem is the compiler knows if I finish this without nil, the compiler is going to tell me that I, nev that I never terminated the string. Um, so everyone was always asking, you know, it, it can tell me that I'm not doing it, why can't it do it for itself? Uh, the other problem was, if one of your objects actually ended up being nil, you did something to your array and it ended up being nil, well then your object, then your array terminates early, um, and you're going to have a shorter array than you expected. Well, now what it does is, first of all, with the new way of declaring arrays, all arrays, um, if there's a nil object in there, it's going to throw an exception. It's, a, it's not going to let you build, and it's going to say, oops, you have an error, can't do that. Um, but the coolest thing is, now all of this code disappears. NS array objects are now, like with other objects that I've shown you, literals. Oopsies, that's not what I want to do. You can say at bracket, you can say at you know, you can do the same thing. Um, and you have an array. You've instantiated an array. And that is very cool. Again, everyone is very happy about that. Um, the next thing is that uh, it is mutable arrays. Uh, the catch with this notation is that you can't create a mutable array. Um, so essentially, this is a static array. You can't change the length. Um, and if you add or remove an object, it's going to be a nil, and it's going to mess up your code. Um, so it's kind of like an array in Java versus an array list. Um, and so the way to get around that um, is actually with a method call. Uh, when you declare it like this, just put an extra bracket in front, and at the end, say, mutable copy, and essentially what it's going to do is it's going to, and then you also have to change your uh, definite or your declaration up here to ns mutable array. And all that does is now, instead of having an array, you have a mutable array. It's more like an array list instead of a regular array. Um, and it's wonderful. It works great. I've tried it and I've changed all of my code. Um, and so the next thing you're wondering is um, how to access these objects. It used to be that if you wanted to access an object, um, you would say your object is, you would call your object, or you would assign an array element to an object by saying array object at index, and you normally have a variable, but instead I'm just going to use a constant, um, and you get the third element. Now, it's very exciting. We no longer have to do that. Again, just like most other languages, we now have array subscripting. You can now say array 3, and again, just like any other language, it just works. It's great, it's wonderful, and again, it's just something that everyone's happy about. So uh, those are the biggies. Uh, that's what's going. Those are the big things that came in the new modern Objective C.
Uh, that's all I really wanted to show you guys for now. Um, thanks for watching, and look for more tutorials in all of my series. Thanks. Bye.